Pokemon Scarlet and Violet have been a blast for me personally, but I have to say, the game runs horribly, and the graphics are... Well, they are something. I'll tell you that. But what if I told you it didn't have to be that way? If only there was some magical way of making the game look nicer and smoother. PC, baby! Today, we will be exploring emulation and an incredible mod that can make Pokemon run at 60 frames per second. Okay, let's get into it. I decided to make my characters look different on each platform. So if you see purple hair, it is Switch gameplay, and if you see pink hair, it's PC gameplay. The first thing we will be doing is internal upscaling. This basically makes the game look sharper. I want to remind everyone that watching this video in 1080p will give you the full experience. Check out the difference that it makes. The differences aren't as easy to spot like they were in my Mario Sunshine or Mario Galaxy videos. So I took some high quality screenshots. YouTube compression will never do games full justice. So this is the best way for you to see what it looks like playing this in person. Hey gamer, welcome to the Photoshop segment of this video. Yeah, I, I use GIMP. I'm poor. Please subscribe. <laughs> this image was taken on a Switch. Now, honestly, it looks okay, right? It's not offensive, there's nothing really wrong with it. But look what happens when you do internal upscaling two times via emulation. Now, you might be looking at that and going, what is different? I want you to pay close attention to her eyelashes, her eyebrows, and her hairline. Go back to the original, emulation, original, 2x. Now can you see the appeal of internal upscale? Let's look somewhere else. If we zoom 400%, the difference is even more crazy. See how she even gains more hairs here? Isn't that crazy? Like absolutely insane. Now there are some lighting differences here, but I want to bring your attention to the rock wall on the left. So pay attention to the texture here and the leaves. This is what it looks like on the switch. This is what it looks like with 2x upscaling. Notice how now you can see a lot more detail in the rock texture and the edges of the leaves are much more defined. Native, 2x. Native, 2x. You can actually see the individual leaves on this tree, whereas before they were kind of just blobby meshes. Now let's look at her hands. This is what it looks like on the switch. This is what it looks like via emulation. Everything is just sharper. It's almost like you're putting glasses on. It's not like a crazy big leap, but it's enough to go, wow, that looks really nice. Emulation, the switch. Emulation, the switch. Now, check out this tree. Native, 2x. <laughs> Look at that, that's crazy, right? Native, 2x. Wow. If we're gonna get crazy with the pixels, this is what it looks like on the switch. This is what it looks like in emulation. So that's like putting glasses on for sure. That is absolutely crazy. Now here's the thing, 2x native is cool and all, but we can go even further beyond. Let's check out 4x native. So now we're looking at the switch version one more time and I'm gonna turn on 4x. So something you'll notice with 4x, it is really sharp. However, it's not that big of a leap from 2x. So let's compare it to 2x now. This is 2x, this is 4x. Now I think we're gonna have to zoom in a lot further to really see the differences here. 2x, 4x. At this point, it's practically indistinguishable. Now why is that? Well, there's a point of diminishing returns. Because I only have a 1080p monitor, there's only so much raising the resolution will actually make a difference. We'll come back to internal upscaling. Now it's time for 60 FPS. This mod was made by the boy 181 and they have spent over 80 hours working on this mod. Look at how smooth this is. It is so refreshing, especially after playing on the Switch for so long. Now it's amazing, but it's nowhere near perfect. One of the few times where I can get a, just a non-stop 60 FPS with no questions asked is when I'm in front of the ocean. And I think it's just because there's not really anything to render and the mod can just smoothly run 
at 60 FPS and it's nice. It's still not perfectly stable. What does running a mod like this cost? Not money cost. I'm talking hardware. What kind of PC do you need to be able to run this? Well, apparently a NASA computer because my $4,000 PC is struggling in many places. Now, to be fair, my PC is kind of old. I don't want to say that too loud. He's a bit self-conscious. But I typically never have performance issues in any games that I play. So it's worth mentioning that you need a very good rig that's pretty modern. Thanks to the power of friendship, my buddy decided to check out the mod with his fancy modern machine. His experience was much smoother than mine, and you're looking at his gameplay right now. I'll put my PC specs and my friends on the screen so you can get a general idea of what to expect from your own PC. Keep in mind the mod is being updated and so are the Switch emulators, so this can only improve with time. Let's compare some cutscenes since those are nice to use as references. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> hey, I mean, they both got glitches, you know what I mean? But listen, let's go back to internal upscaling since there are more things that I want to show you. Now let's look at LeChonk. Now something I thought you guys might find interesting is the difference between handheld mode and docked mode. Right now we're looking at handheld. So we're gonna go ahead and dock the switch really quick and boom. As you can see, the switch on its own already does a little bit of internal upscaling. This is handheld and now we docked it. As you can see, even the UI gets a little sharper. All right, this is gonna be a fun one. Landscapes. Landscapes have things really far in the distance which internal upscaling is amazing for. This is what the game looks like on handheld. Now let's dock the switch. Ooh, that was quite a decent leap. Docked, handheld. The biggest difference I'm noticing is the trees that are closer to the camera. They become much more defined with the leaves and a few things in the background become a tad sharper. Look at the buildings in the town in the background, specifically the one to the left of the entrance. However, I will say that the background doesn't change at all. Specifically that horrific giant Pokeball in the background. It just, and the spires, it just looks so bad. And docking it doesn't change a thing. Well, let's go even further to 2X. Hmm, still unchanged. All right, now it's time to go to 4X. Hmm. Okay, so what's happening here? Why is the background still horrible? Well, it's because of LOD. What is LOD? Level of detail. So when you make a video game and you're creating the 3D models for that game, sometimes you make lower detailed versions 
of the models so that when they're further away from the camera, they use less resources on the game and it looks eh, just as good because it's so far away you barely <laughs> notice it. The unfortunate reality, since this is LOD, is that there is no way to fix this with internal upscaling. Now hold the phone there. As I was recording this video, the boy 181, the goat, decided he wanted to make an LOD mod. So using these screenshots here, you can see the trees in the distance are still insanely high detailed and they're not the flat ugly trees we're looking at in my screenshots. Wow, just look at this. This looks absolutely phenomenal. So with modding, as always, there's hope. Enough landscapes. Let's take a look at something that's more noticeable in gameplay. Your character. I want you to pay attention to my face and the edges of my hat. And let's go ahead and two exit. As you can see, my hat is a lot more smoother on the edges and my clothes are a lot sharper. So go ahead and pay close attention to my backpack strap. 2x, docked. 2x, docked. Look at the Pokemon Center lady's hair and her eyebrows. They go from pixels to actually defined features. Take a look at that brick wall in the background. It goes from, yeah, you can tell that's a brick wall to, oh, that's definitely a brick wall. And since we have an actual full detailed building right here in the background, we can also take a look at that. The roof just looks so much nicer. The fence, it goes from staircased to just smooth. This Pokemon wireless symbol goes from a little bit of staircasing, smooth baby. Okay, we have another shot of Nimona here. And this time we're in the main city. So once again, we kind of know where to look. The hair, the eyelashes, the eyebrows, we'll go ahead and dock it. Yep, a lot sharper as expected. Another thing I'm noticing is the plants right here seem to get a little more defined. And the wall in the background, check that out. Oh my goodness, look at the windows on this yellow building. Notice how you actually gain a whole new dimension of detail. Wait a minute. This is handheld and this is docked. You lose one of the defining lines on the windows, but then gain one on... <laughs> Wait, why is it like that? Oh, that's kind of funny, actually. All right, let's go to 2x. Boom. Way, way sharper, as expected. The little stones on this wall here are as sharp as ever. Let's go with all the way back to handheld. It's literally an incredible generational leap. But hey, notice how we finally get the full detail in these windows here in the background. <laughs> they don't have to alternate anymore. We finally have enough pixels to show all the detail back there. The little flowers here and this design on the wall of this mosaic design is clearly defined. And the tiles on this roof. You can actually tell that they have defining lines. All right, time for my favorite part of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, the infamous door. I don't know why this door looks so bad in the game, but I just crack up every time I see it. And we're gonna upscale it. So this is what it looks like on handheld. Let's go ahead and go up to 2x, a whole leap. We're skipping docked. 2x. <laughs> it looks the same. Like the edges up here go from like super staircasing and nice and sharp and my character goes from like super pixelated to super sharp, but the door is unchanged. And same with this orange line, bro. Like it's the exact same. Why? Why, bro? What happened? Oh my goodness. But yeah, let's go all the way to 4X, right? Might as well just max it out. The max that the emulator can put out, 4X. Nothing changed. All right, I give up, I'll see you. After getting my heart crushed by that gray, lifeless door, I decided to have a bit more fun with the 60 FPS mod. Oh my gosh, it runs so slow. Oh my goodness. It's like actual Switch. Hey, they did a good job with the accuracy, am I right, fellas? It, it plays just like the Switch. <laughs> There's no difference. They really nailed the game freak aesthetic with this one. Good job, guys. The menus load so much faster on the emulator. Like, you have to wait a long time to preview, like, what something looks like on original hardware. But here, it just loads so fast. It's incredible. 
it's really nice to not have to wait six years for everything to load in. How cool this shot is with the internal upscaling. It's nice and sharp. The 60 FPS is definitely not fully working right now. I think it's funny how NBCs go really slow frame rate. So look at this NBC on the right. They're kind of like slow-ish. And then in the far distance, bro is at like eight FPS up there. <laughs> Holy, this building looks way sharper than I remember it. Let's do some comparisons. Oh yeah, like the building looks so much less detailed and the trees don't look as sharp. Oh my gosh. Handheld players are getting robbed. <laughs> That's actually crazy. Oh my goodness. Wow. I love it. I love emulation, man. It is beautiful. You can tell when the 60 FPS just kicks in real nice. When I get close to this door, it's just like, oh wow, suddenly the game wants to run really, really smoothly. But as soon as I get away from the wall, oh, I'm going inside apparently. Oh my goodness gracious. This mod indoors is horrible. The mod creator was saying that um, there's like this weird effect with the camera movement system and how bad it is. But look, when I'm in the corner, it's like, oh hey, silky smooth 60. Look at this silky smooth 60 spinning. And then as soon as I, wow, these animations look great. As soon as I leave, oh my goodness, bro, it's so bad. Oh, it's so bad. <laughs> yeah, every corner looks amazing. Like this looks so smooth. But it, once again, once you leave it, anytime the camera has to move indoors, this mod is gonna struggle tremendously to make that happen. In the kitchen, uh, wait, bro's hair is kind of glitching out. I think that's a, emulator issue, not a mod issue. <laughs> hey, I didn't say it was perfect. Oh, here we go. This looks really smooth. This is nice. Yeah, so as long as there's not a ton of geometry and things in the building where you're in, then, you know, it'll run nice and smooth. You'll get those really nice 60 frames per second cutscenes. I wish I could play the whole game like this, but it's not perfect enough to be an actual replacement for the Switch. It's really just nice seeing the cutscene in 60 frames per second. It looks so beautiful. The 2X and everything. Holy cow. Okay, the phone transfer animation. Oh, the map. Okay, this is all like double speed. It should not be like that. It doesn't look terrible, it just definitely is, you know, one of those examples of things being way too fast. Look at even like the NPCs in the background, they're eating their sandwiches and drinking water at 60 frames per second. Just so much smoother than actual hardware. This is a great panning shot, so much detail is here. 60 FPS Clavel. He looks pretty good. And look at the buizel in the background dancing and hopping. <laughs> oh, his eyes are twitching, that's interesting. Wonder what the cause of that is. All right, do I get a good frame rate in here? Oh, of course not. <laughs> oh, yo, we get to see this woman with her crazy hair in 60 FPS. Wow. What an upgrade. So sharp, her hair is nice and sleek. Eyelashes looking great. Oh, <laughs> okay. Uh, that definitely was not intentional. Nomona is going to tell us her entire life mission in 60 frames per second. She like keeps like jumping in between the animations though. It's very jarring. Oh, that looks clean. You can definitely tell it's a mod. Like it doesn't feel like it belongs at 60. I wonder what it would take to make it feel more natural. Like I wonder what that would look like. When I use the 60 FPS mod for Mario Sunshine, like it actually does feel like it belongs at 60 FPS. Like it feels like that's the proper thing. The director's office. Load times are much faster on PC as well. Like I do not recall having to wait nearly as long. It was much faster. His eyes are twitching again. I wonder if that's like a 60 FPS thing. Is it because he's blinking faster than usual? No way, there's no way. Yeah, because he does normal blinking. What is that? Why is his face twitching? Okay, I think her cheering animation isn't supposed to be that unnaturally fast either. All right, to the dorm room. Yeah, some cutscenes are still like running in double speed. This is unnaturally fast. Ooh, this time lapse effect is really cool. It doesn't look like it's specially sped up for 60 FPS though. 
But yeah, this is a really cool effect. I like this a lot. All right, time for the long schoolyard cutscene. I wonder, I think it's all in engine, so it will look better. Oh, but the frame rate is horrible, like it was on the console. The edges of people with the bokeh effect looks even more exaggerated. But yeah, this is a substantial improvement. It is 60 FPS. Bro looks like he's glowing up on that stage. Everyone kind of looks like they're glowing a little bit. Okay, wait a minute. I can't tell if this is running. Okay, that is faster. It's like going through all the things way faster. Okay, that's an issue. <laughs> it ran out of shots before it had B-roll time too. Okay, so this cutscene is insanely broken because everything's running at the improper timings. Okay, it seems synced up again. Oh, that's the most HD shot we're gonna get all day, that close-up of me. And then suddenly it's like 5 FPS. I have no idea what happened. Yeah, it's like desynced. The audio already happened where they cheered. So weird. Maybe it's just too many characters on screen at the same time. All right, we are out and about. And frame rate is still... Could be better, but it could be worse. It's not the worst thing in the world. This battle should be nice and smooth. Yeah, the Pokemon battles always run a lot smoother, I think because it like de-renders a lot of the grass in the background. But it just depends on the camera angle and a ton of stuff like that. Alright, we catch these. Oh, what the? <laughs> Holy, what an animation. Hey, this looks pretty good though. Yeah, it looks really nice and smooth. Not too bad. Let's see the Pokedex animation. I think I've only seen it a few times. Oh. <laughs> it's like instant like it's kind of a nice thing especially if you're catching pokemon really frequently but like you couldn't even see it it just was like boom done that's actually kind of hilarious we gotta catch the starly 1000 percent okay wait this animation Looks pretty smooth. Yeah, this is really nice. The way like the battle works, and when you pan the camera, you can really get a full feel of that 60. Is it smooth all the way around? No, it gets a little choppy when you look that way. But right here is like a nice sweet spot. It looks really good and smooth. Not bad. Smoother than Switch gameplay, but still not silky 60 FPS, which would be super nice. It's like high FPS around this area, and then as soon as we look over here, it like slows down a bit. I still can't get over how much more HD this looks over the Switch though, like this looks really good. Usually when I showcase a console game on PC, it is always improved in every way. Mario Sunshine and Mario Galaxy were incredible experiences on PC. Even Smash Ultimate on PC was awesome. However, we are on the cutting edge of technology here, which means that we're early. Things still have a long way to go to see improvements, and that's the beauty of it. One day, this will be the definitive way to experience these games. I think it's safe to say that Pokemon Scarlet and Violet on PC are nowhere near perfect, but I hope this video kind of opened your mind a little bit to what's possible with emulation and a decently powerful computer. If you feel like you learned something interesting or this topic fascinated you, then check out the other games I have brought to the modern era with emulation. Lastly, if you love Pokemon and want to see me do this with Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, then you'll have to subscribe. Not only am I going to take that game to the next level, but I'm also going to introduce a unique surprise that not many people know about. So, I'll see you then. Bye-bye.